Get back now to your story, dominating headlines. Global, in fact, it's been the biggest international story for the last three weeks now. Those fleeing the war in Ukraine are facing much uncertainty. They've lost their homes, livelihoods, and on top of that, they are tired, cold, and hungry, and desperate. Some of them have lost their loved ones. The UN Refugee Agency calling for urgent assistance. Archbishop Stephen Brislin from the Southern African Bishops' Conference is joining us now from Cape Town to discuss what the church is planning and how they are intervening there. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Archbishop. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. My thinking ahead of this interview, just quickly, some, some context, was that uh, the one of the longest recent times, one of the longest serving uh, uh, popes of the Catholic Church was from Poland. That was John Paul II. And currently Poland is receiving the majority, the majority of the Ukrainian uh, refugees who are running, many of whom are still women and children. So the Catholic Church very well placed to assist in Poland, for example. What are you doing there on the ground to assist the refugees, if you are able to share that with our viewers? Thank you very much and good afternoon to all your viewers. You're quite correct, of course, many of the refugees are fleeing to Poland and Pope Francis has acknowledged the Polish government and the Polish people for their openness and their warmth in receiving refugees from the Ukraine. There are many different organizations, of course, involved in giving relief and support to the refugees as well as to people within the Ukraine. In terms of the Catholic Church, it is particularly our organization called Caritas. Uh, Caritas is an international organization, but is found in many different countries. And Caritas Poland is very active in receiving the refugees, of giving them shelter and accommodation. But there are numerous um, Caritas organizations of other countries that have sent relief uh, to, for the refugees, for example, from Spain, from Slovenia, um, from the England and Wales, uh, CAFOD, Catholic Relief Services in the United States. So together with other organizations of other faiths and other Christian denominations, as well as just general uh, NGOs, we're trying to give the support that we possibly can to those who have been displaced, to those who have lost loved ones or who have been injured in this war. Yeah, I saw a report a, a, a few days ago, around the weekend, with the Pope Francis condemning the invasion of Russia. And here in South Africa, there's been a lot of discussion and debate, including in Parliament, as, as recently as yesterday and earlier today, the Deputy President defending South Africa's approach and position or stance on this uh, conflict. Does the Catholic Church have a thought about how South Africa should be approaching or should be responding uh, to this conflict? <laughs> Pope Francis has called this a harrowing war and he's called some of the acts of war or the reported acts of war as being barbaric, barbarism, he has said. And it's absolutely true. We cannot condone the violence and the loss of life, the loss of um, dignity of people, the disbursement of families, the displacement of people. Uh, this, this really cannot be accepted at all. Now, I think that in terms of how we should respond, I think we should respond negatively towards the violence, negatively, negatively towards warfare. Uh, people are being injured, they are being hurt, their families are being broken up, their whole lives have been disrupted, and there can be no um, uh, allowing or, or thinking that that is normal or satisfactory. There's quite possibly two sides to the story, and I think that certainly, as Pope Francis himself has said, the way forward is through mediation, it is through dialogue. But in order for that dialogue to take place, it is my belief that certainly there should be a truce, a ceasefire at least, in order that the two parties can meet in terms of being equal parties, if you like. I think that it's, it's very laudable for for anyone to, to advocate mediation and dialogue, but it's also very difficult when the war is going on to achieve that dialogue in a way that will um, hopefully bring about peace.
Yeah, I guess what you're saying, a temporary, if that would be, or some sort of a ceasefire would enable that dialogue, that mediation that the South African government says it supports, uh, it supports as well. But unfortunately, while the talks are happening today, we understand, Archbishop, between the Russians and the Ukrainians, the fighting is still happening. We've got uh, reporters on the grounds, Paman Lagoge and uh, Jody Jacobs and cameraman Joe Komane on the border there with Poland. The numbers are just growing and growing. What would your biggest fear be for as long as this war continues in terms of the humanitarian cost? Look, our hearts certainly go out to, you know, those who have been injured, those who have lost loved ones and those who have been displaced. It really is a very tragic situation. And the great danger of this war, I think, is that it could easily escalate into something very much bigger. There is going to be an impact. And in fact, the impact is being felt already on the world. We know that in South Africa, we have been warned that prices of food will probably increase, uh, petrol prices will increase. And so there will be that sort of impact. But one of the biggest dangers is that the war will escalate. There's also been some talk of, you know, the possibility of using nuclear warheads. And that would really endanger not only Europe and not only Ukraine and the neighboring countries, that will endanger the whole of the world. And therefore, we've really got to try to find ways in, to, to bring about peace and, and to encourage the parties to enter into that dialogue and into that mediation. But it can only be enabled, as you have said, if there is some sort of ceasefire, if, if the war stops, so that these issues can be dealt with. Thank you very much, Archbishop Stephen Brislin from the Southern African Bishops' Conference, uh, talking to us uh, from Cape Town about, of course, the church's position on the war in Russia, Ukraine, and the kinds of interventions that they are doing there to assist this humanitarian disaster that's also unfolding. And he also shared us a view of the Catholic Church about South Africa's official stance on this war.